Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and B-Man G Drive. Today we are creating our very own hypermiling car uh, from the 1990s. So this is based on the, I think it's the um, GM electric vehicle, I think it's called the EV1. General Motors EV1, Chevrolet EV1, I think. I haven't done any, any research on this at all yet, so uh, I think it's the GM EV1 body. It's a mod body uh, with a super low coefficient of drag, just 0.125, which is very low. And for those of you guys who don't know what coefficient of drag means, basically it can cut through the air uh, like a knife cutting through butter. So is that a good analogy? Sure. So we are making a very, very, very fuel efficient car. I'm not the best at designing cars. I know that, but we're going to try to do uh, right by uh, Hypermiler. So we're going to do uh, a very expensive car. It's going to be around the $100,000 mark in 1990, uh, $2012 though. Partial lunar fiberglass. I think we'll fiberglass a bit lighter. Yeah, fiberglass it is on the clock. Carbon fiber, that's too expensive. I think that's too unrealistically expensive. We're not going to do that, though. It's going to be a mid mounted, either transverse or a launch, probably. Or we can do rear. Yeah, a rear engine. That's going to be a very small engine, though. Push right, look lighter. Rear seat are probably the lightest. We'll do that. Uh, this thing is going to be extremely slow. Very light and very slow, though. Um, inline three, obviously, even though I just made it inline three. Uh, we're making another inline three. This could be. People have been asking for a boxer, but I plan on doing a boxer video soon. A modern. Uh, maybe like a modern rally car with a boxer, four cylinder or six cylinder, who knows. Uh, either way, this is going to be a very small engine. I'm thinking one liter displacement sounds like a standard size. Uh, dual vert cam, four valves or five? We'll do four valves for now. I, I don't want, we don't really need VVL. You never really need, oh, it's not even unlocked yet. I so we might as well five valve. More weight, but slightly more efficiency. Um, full forge internals, I might change that though. Uh, this thing's going to make all its power from revs, obviously, a turbocharged engine. We're going to do fuel economy tuned by default. We'll actually tune that in minutes. First cylinder, standard intake, and premium fuel. Just because this car is a hypermiler, it's also very expensive because this is like a purpose built hypermiler. It's like the GM EV1, but it's a gas powered vehicle instead of electric. Um, similar to the Volkswagen XL1, which is a uh, two cylinder, 0 0.8 liter turbo diesel car hybrid. Uh, which got I think 260 miles per gallon, which is insane. Uh, we're gonna do a good cat, and we're gonna do a yeah, no first muffler and a just a straight through secondary muffler. We're trying to save some weight here, we could probably make a smaller exhaust pipe. We, we, we might do that. We're gonna lower this down, down close. Compression. Well, now this thing is not about performance, it doesn't matter if it makes power right at peak, I'd rather not, but it doesn't really matter all that much. 7500 seems like a fine rpm ribbon to 17 percent efficiency so a very inefficient engine so far uh but we are going to remedy that remedy that remedy that yeah we're, we're gonna remedy we're gonna pump down this air ratio very 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 low and yeah, not not that low obviously uh, very 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 low 0.6 for now it's not that low easy we'll start here uh, this seems to be pretty much useless on creating power. Like, if we just took it off, nice flat power curve. Now it's not flat. Actually, makes it just, just takes the horsepower off. That's bad. Uh, that's okay, though. Losing efficiency there. It's not gonna be the best engine, obviously. It's not gonna be all there. Um, good compression, good ignition, having smaller exhaust pipes. Well, I don't I'm gonna say it was weight, of course. Let's know in general. Well, our intercooler, it's going to help us out too. Uh, I think, like, honestly, 60 horsepower is probably fine. Could be a bit more, could be a bit less. I really, really, really wish that, um, the internals would help us with the fuel economy. Do we really need forged internals? I mean, yeah, it's going to make its power from red, so we're going to need that yet. Forged. Okay. That'll be forged, that's okay. Uh, yeah, once we do iron twist, 7,000 RPM. So still. Fairly reliable, 50 reliable, that 50 reliability is fairly reliable, not the most, not the worst. We're using up a lot of our octane here though. This turbo isn't first to be honest, is it doing anything? But yeah, I mean it's literally cutting a horsepower out, but that's okay. Uh we could probably even go with no cat. Yeah, we could probably go with no cat. We don't really need a cat. There's not a ton of emissions anyways, I think we're probably fine. Well, I don't want to I don't want to go too much power. 20% efficiency, so we're gonna start there. It's gonna get hopefully quite a bit higher than that, but 20% is the start. 
This body is super aerodynamic to begin with, which is going to help us out tons. Uh, it's going to be a rear-wheel drive, a manual, probably a four-speed open diff radial. I think I think medium compound is the way to go. Um, alloys to start. This could be a cheaper car. Who knows? Ended disc, two piston, fine, fully clad, and a two-seater. We need to get entertainment. Yeah, it's got a basic. This is still a production. This is a production car. Um, it might be. It might be based off another brand. It might not be. Case uh, no power steering is necessary. And the best safety because it's got to have the best safety. The production. Better. Right now, 52 miles per gallon. Not not great. Not terrible. Um, it's it's gonna get better. Hopefully, though. Hopefully, it's gonna get better. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Really, is it gonna get better? Uh, let's first off get a little better fuel economy. Save weight. 55, 56, we're gonna get so far from the lower, but 180 sounds like a reasonable street speed. Uh, and wheels. So one thing I really don't like is the wheels, they just don't stop at all. It actually probably makes smaller time. Fine. 125 front rear, nice and tiny. We're gonna make up for that partially in weight because we're gonna move the tires out so far. Oh, this doesn't look so bad. That's okay though. But I have that high speed stability, even though this thing is not made for high speed stability at all. Oh, 59 miles per gallon. There we go. We did. We did actually. 12 inches. 11 inches. 11 inch wheels. We are getting slightly better fuel economy, saving the saving weight, which is actually more important than the next. Just a bit. Okay. Yeah, that just looks too bad, I think. Just too bad. We're at 59 MPG. We're getting there. We're getting there. 61. Yeah, I knew we didn't need a four. Five. Four speeds, all we need, really. Over 60 miles per gallon. What's the cost? Just 21,000. This thing is dirt cheap so far. We can probably, we can probably even go carbon fiber. Even though it's not mass production. But, you know, really, how mass production is this car going to be? That's my question. How mass production is this car going to be? Uh, we can also work on some other parts of the efficiency of the engine here. We can... oh. Now, we have a bit of octane to use still. 20, well, there's our efficiency. 21%. Here we go. 20... This is not bad, actually. Revs, revs, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It makes power not bad. It makes peak torque at twenty four hundred RPM, which is not terrible for a car. But you know, when you only make seventy two pound feet of torque, that is terrible. So far, we're getting seventy one miles per gallon. I was hoping to get open for eighty. Um, well, there we go. Overdrive, it is man. That such... definitely need that four speed. Not getting much bigger than that four speed though. Seventy two. Ooh, cross ply. Ugh. That's not gonna help us at all. That's okay though. So we're at 72 miles per gallon right now. We could probably go down to one pistons even. The rear brakes aren't having any of it. We can actually break smart. Just, just the braking ratio here. There we go. Tiny, tiny, tiny brakes. Um, 73 miles per gallon is what we're gonna be. We should probably go more aero. Yeah. A little bit less though. This could actually turn into an actual production vehicle price. We're at 74 miles per gallon. We're getting there. Like, I think what? This is still going to be an expensive car. 35 grand, 40 grand maybe. 75 miles per gallon right now. $40,000. I think that's what we're going to stay for the budget. Probably 40 or so thousand dollars. Uh, definitely a pretty expensive car back in 1990. Um, but again, we're 75 miles per gallon average. It's not terrible. It's it's not terrible at all. Uh, what is left to do? I think I think the basics of the car are basically done. So sixteen hundred pounds, seventy five miles per gallon average, a sportiness rating of a of a whopping eight point four. That's not that's not terrible. Reliability is actually kind of low. Um, then again, we're using pretty pretty advanced stuff. What are what are what wheels do we have? Oh, magnesium wheels that'll, that'll take a bit more money. We're not carbon fiber though. Yeah, we can get over eighty with carbon fiber. Yeah, I think rear launch rebuild is actually the way to go though if we want uh 
best here. Rear wheel drive because it's right in the rear. Manual. Advanced automatic. That's going to be good, right? Ugh. Good at all. Okay. So the basis of the car. Oh, wait. Are we perfect gearing there already? Nice. Perfect gearing at 50. That's kind of good. Okay. 52 right now. So we are at 76 miles per gallon average. What's the weight distribution? Oh, I think it was 40 so 40? 41. 59. That's not... It's not awful for a rear engine car. That's not awful for a rear engine car. That's not a sports car. Wow, we're pulling a whopping 0.62 Gs. Here's 16, 13, which doesn't sound terrible. It sounds sounds like a fine amount for 50 horsepower. Then again, this car is super, super light, um, which does aid in that process. Uh, what I'm going to do now probably is, uh, we, yeah, we're at one liter. I'm going to design the car. And then after the design, I'm going to talk about the car and stuff like that as well. And we are going to uh, take it for a drive. In BMG Drive. Uh, so I guess sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. So we're starting the build for our Hypermiler car from the 1990s. Uh, this build actually took about half the time of the usual build, probably because it's a 1990s car for one, so they are pretty uh, pretty plain compared to today's cars and like the 1970s cars, uh, as well as um, this is a Hypermiler similar to the GM EV1. I mean, this is the GM EV1 body. Which I'll show you a picture up above here. It is the plainest car you'll ever see. It's so plain. Uh, and I think this definitely looks a bit better than the, the GM EV1. Uh, first things first, of course, like always, the headlights. And I am just sort of playing around with the idea of having uh, the two big square uh, Maven headlights. This is going to be a Maven branded vehicle uh, with um, sort of two rectangular ish shaped grills, which aren't really grills on the front just for their Maven design elements. But at the end, I actually decided to take that off and I just sort of work on having a. Uh, a smaller Volvo-esque ish, like a modern Volvo similar grill down below with a side vent and some uh, some bars next to that as well. I end up having just uh, the Volvo-esque grill, then they have two side vents and getting rid of the dual Maven pattern grills, I guess, on the top of the hood. Uh, what my thought process behind that was, you know, Maven eventually, of course, goes away from having that double grill thing and goes to just the single Volvo kind of big grill and they get bigger and bigger, of course, as the, uh, the, the days go on. Playing around with more stuff at the bottom, I do finish at the bottom with some turn signal lights and a black piece of chrome or black piece of trim at the bottom with uh, like a fog lamp. Uh, using color, I actually stick on a blue color. I haven't done too much blue cars lately, and I do decide on choosing either blue or green, finishing off again with a blue. Uh, I already have the wheels chosen, a three-spoke design, and the mirror is also placed, putting a simple turn signal down at the bottom there. This is a production car, but they didn't really spend a ton of money on the actual design of this car because it was all the money went towards the powertrain, which of course is so important in a hypermiler. It is one of the most important things that in aerodynamics, which of course I hope a lot of money was spent to a 0.125 coefficient of drag is extremely low. Uh, playing around the back end now, I'm adding tail lights, uh, and it's similar again to the modern Maven cars with a sort of a um, an upside down U shape, how the tail light just goes on, on the edge, up and around. I do end up making it quite a bit smaller to actually fit the license plate in because I still want this to be sort of a production vehicle. Maybe just not a mass market production vehicle. It's a production car, uh, but it's not mass market. I put a fog lamp or a reverse light actually underneath the license plate and then add a side trim, like a piece of black trim on the side, adding a black trim on the bottom of the rear car as well, and playing around with the wheels and stuff, making it so it doesn't severely oversteer, which now it understeers just a bit, which is pretty good. Uh, this car is definitely awesome. In front of us, we have the Maven Motors. Futuro. All right, guys, so the car is done. In front of us, of course, is the Maven Futuro GV, or Great Value, just like the famous Yugo's trim level. Uh, this is Maven's weirdest car of the 1990s, I'd say. It definitely follows some of Maven's style, so a quick walk around before we actually jump into BMG Drive. Uh, front headlights, similar to Maven's square headlights, sort of curving around there. Uh, sort of a grill in the middle. I guess it's a grill. I don't know if it would actually be functional, but it's there nonetheless. Uh, followed by some other like vents on the sides here and some trim pieces over top of it and the turn signals and then a little black bar. Accent piece in the bottom with some fog lamps I guess or like daytime running lights. I'm not too sure what they are yet. The Maven logo in the front. So this is a first for Maven. They don't usually put their logo on the front of the car as you probably can tell for their newer models. Um, and this is the actual first 1990 Maven model. This is the first Maven model, model ever to not have the double Maven grill in the middle. So they have the 
sort of Volvo-esque, the modern Volvo-esque style grille, uh, which is featured on some of my new newer Maven models. On the sides, we have some circular mirrors. I'm not 100% sure if I dig them, but they're there nonetheless. Um, black roof, blue body, a black piece of trim going down the side. I added this just to add a bit more, you know, with the black theme of some things, because Maven likes to have a bit of sporty-esque, a bit of flair. And this car was basically made um, because they had to meet some emission standards, probably, or some fuel requirements or something like that. I'm sure they had something. Uh, turn signal down here, another turn signal right there. So it's definitely a lot of turn signals, a pretty basic door handle, pretty basic gas cap. Overall, the design of this car is pretty basic. It's 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 not the best designed. It's definitely an interesting body. I'll give it that. Uh, the wheels are some like three piece, some three three piece, some three spoke sort of wheels. There, they look nineties esque, cheap esque, weird, quirky. That's the whole point of this car. Tail lights again, not perfect. Um, this car, I almost imagine it like being a project half done, but still sold to the public. Like, you know, it, it's a test bed for technology and things like that. So it doesn't really matter if the design's perfect. One singular exhaust that looks like that. I think that's cool as heck. Uh, turn signals and brakes all into one then a reverse light right there. So overall, it's a pretty basic, pretty simple car. Uh, nothing too crazy to it. It's not supposed to be the wildest car. Um, supposed to be a Maven hypermiler uh, sold to the masses in quotation, even though it was just sold to meet some sort of regulation for fuel or, or emission. So 76 and a half is for rounding to the nearest half miles per gallon. Thirty eight and a half thousand dollars in twenty twelve dollars back in nineteen ninety. So this thing was. Probably pretty expensive. Um, you know, it, it wouldn't be a cheap car. Uh, definitely something around the same price as like a Mustang GT at the time, I guess, or something. If, you, if we translate the money, things like that. So pre pretty expensive. Uh, but for 75 or so miles per gallon, it's something you, you can't just ignore. Um, I'm sure if I like how this works with the body, because you can't really change that. It looks weird from the front. That's okay though. Overall, had a lot of fun with this car. Um, 4159 exactly, which is reaching 13 and a half, 0 to 60, 180 km an hour top speed. We could go more, but this thing is not about top speed. Of course it's not. Um, but what we're going to do now is take this thing, 4A drive in, beam and G drive, and uh, see how we can handle in a series of uh, events. All right, guys, so we're here in beam and G drive with the Maven Futuro GV. Uh, this is the Hirochi Raceway Short Race Track Circuit. We're going to see what kind of lap time we can get with this thing. Uh, but also, we're going to see what kind of uh, fuel economy. You see the top left here? That's fuel economy. We're going to see if we can get some decent fuel economy as well. I'm hoping for under 10 liters for 100 kilometers. Just, I think around or 20 or so. I'm all forgetting a little less than probably. Which isn't terrible. Considering when you're, you know, racing pretty fast around the racetrack. Come on. There we go. And brake. Oh, this thing's scary to drive. It's so light, which is awesome. Brakes pretty quick, but the tires are so skinny in the front. Uh, it's a such such minimal grip. Brake here because we're coming a little hot. Even on the throttle here. If we can get less than 10, that'd be great. Honestly, I think we're going to get less than 10. That'd be awesome. So this thing is a four speed manual transmission. Uh, one, one thing to note though is I think uh, gears three and four are overdrive gears because we've never I've never got them in this actual race do my initial test runs which I've never finished a lap actually or two laps of this thing. One because it's pretty bad to drive because the tires are so skinny it just likes to start sliding. There we go downshift there. Try to come break nice and early here. Downshift right here then turn in. A bit of braking, turning in here. Oh, we're going on the sand a bit. That's okay, we're fine, we're fine, everything's fine. There we go, lap one done. Now, I'm not sure if this is average fuel economy because it's, 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 it's fluctuating way too much to be average. Where is it? I'm not too sure. We're saving it, we're saving it, don't you worry. We're good, we're good. Oh, when you press the brake, is that the clutch to shift? That's fine. Oh, 
Oh, this thing's just terrifying to drive. There's no grip in any of the tires, so uh, it's... Here right now we're getting zero liters, like, is, is, this accurate? is this a good average? I'm not too sure. We, we've wasted about five liters of fuel thing so far. Which seems pretty bad, to be honest. Take it on the outside for no reason at all. That's okay. Now we're getting some serious speed. Will we hit 100 kilometers an hour? Oh, we're taking the sand. We're taking the sand. That's fine. That's fine. Ooh. We're taking the grass. Oh, there's some cones. We're fine. We hit it. <laughs> there's the third slide. Uh, it did actually give us our average fuel, but it was—it it seemed like it was actually doing pretty good. We're gonna go three roam now. We set the worst time ever. Of course, we had a worse time than the Spitfire Sport, which I th think was our so was actually our, our compact, our, our K car. We're gonna start right back here. Go for a bit of a drive. See, just see more handling dynamics of this car. We're gonna take a turn here. So far, it's not terrible to drive. Um. But I have a feeling that people would probably, or dealers, or people would probably switch up the tires for uh, aftermarket tires, dealers, or people who buy these cars. Because it, it'll be, uh, it just seems scary, you know? Like, there's no, there's no grip on the front at all, and nor in the rear. I think it's um, 135 or 145 millimeter tires in the rear, and 105 is the front, so absolutely tiny. This is like mini Cooper tire size. But, you know, you need less rolling resistance and uh, help us with our fuel economy, I guess. I'm gonna break right here and take this gravel road and see where this takes us. Hopefully somewhere nice. I think a front wheel drive car would be kinda cool too, but um, I'm happy we went here because, uh, you know, burnouts if we can. Perfect for off-roading too, actually. <laughs> no! Oh no. One wheel wonder. I like that. Just go slow then. Look at that. Oh no. We're moving. You're stuck here. That's okay. Uh, overall, I think this car's a lot of fun. Looks terrifying now, but that's okay. Uh, definitely, yeah, a, a fun car to drive. Scary, though. It's almost like a Miata, but just worse in every way. Uh, I'd say, I mean, I've never driven a K car, but I feel like it'd be similar to a older K car, just because it is equally almost as small. Probably a little bigger, but, you know, definitely as light. Uh, and the tires are probably uh, as small, if not skinnier, than like, what a K car would have. Um, 75 miles per gallon. Not too bad, I'm not sure what that is in the liters off the top of my head, but uh, I'm assuming it's pretty good as well. And this is US miles per gallon, not European, so there's a difference. Um, one thing I want to say before we actually finish off here is um, not tomorrow, but probably the day after we will have, or maybe the day after that, depending on how long it takes for you to actually do it, we're going to have the first part of the subscriber car series where I actually review all you guys' cars, and there's about 30 or 40 cars I have to go over, so it's going to be a long video. Um, I might post timestamps in the comments, something like that, just to have everyone so everyone can see their own cars and stuff. It's gonna be a lot of work, it's gonna be a lot of fun though, to generate guys' cars. I'm gonna try to keep it to about a minute per car, or two minutes per car, which is not a lot of time, obviously. I know, it's not a lot of time. Um, but, you know, I don't want it to be a two hour video. I think 40 minutes to an hour is probably where it's gonna be, uh, which is a, a very long video still. Um, if you guys are really gonna enjoy that, then when Canadian Steel actually drives the cars, you guys are gonna enjoy the heck out of that, and I hope. I hope Canadian Steel enjoys driving all the cars. The top 10 is going to go to Canadian Steel. And it'll be a bit longer racing and stuff. It won't be a one minute race. It'll be a few minutes and stuff like that probably. But uh, details are being worked on as, we, as we're going through. 
Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure to check out my Twitch channel. Uh, it is uh, Twitch TV. Like dot. Like the channel is Twin Turbos TV. Twin Turbos TV is the Twitch channel. Find that. Follow that. And I will start doing live streams on there soon. I might do one on YouTube too. Or vice versa. I don't know what's going to happen. I will be posting the content on YouTube for sure though. Just so you guys can see it if you guys could make it to the stream. So um, I think that's pretty much everything. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.